Prior to Greedfall's release, developers' spiders were known for some pretty subpar RPGs, I'm looking at you, Technomancer, but released in September 2019, Greedfall took a huge step in the right direction towards pleasing RPG fans, but that's not to say the game didn't have its issues. With Greedfall 2 releasing sometime in 2024, I just wasn't able to save myself for that long, but playing the original Greedfall again, it's been easy to remember the joy that the game provides, and it was just as easy to look past the clunky combat and sometimes hilarious bugs because there's just an undeniable charm to it. It's been nearly two years without Greedfall being a part of my life and once Greedfall 2 is released, God knows how long it'll be before I play the original after that, so I just wanted to tell Greedfall from the bottom of my heart. And, miss you. and now I wonder what Greedfall 2 will offer, but for those who've never played the original Greedfall, it's an enjoyable middle-of-the-road AA game. It's got a really solid RPG core underneath the distinct lack of polish. It's nowhere near the equivalent of unscheduled surprise sex with the misses, but it's far from receiving a swift kick in the bollocks either. Instead, it's very much like a warm hug. It feels good getting a hug off the misses, but it's that female connection that has left me wanting a bit of sex too. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's plenty of positives to discuss, but there's the odd immersion-shattering bug worth mentioning too. Personally, I'm pretty sympathetic when it comes to bugs, but again, some of you may not be. To be honest, bugs are hilarious most of the time, so you know, chill out. You've got transparent floors to enjoy, crazy animations, hilarious NPCs walking aimlessly around the world, and then there's the ones that offer a little atmospheric role to play, like an NPC taking a dusty and thickly bristled brush to the most expensive wallpaper in their homes, or my favourite is the nosy bastard NPC that just stands uncomfortably close to you in the middle of a very private moment. Let's have a look at the combat. It is a little janky and lacks fluidity, but there's a nice variety that can be found in every fight. It's one of the few RPGs that actually encourages a little mixing up of your playstyle, rather than focusing and honing in on that one particular playstyle, which is great as far as I'm concerned. The main points of attack are firearms, melee, magic, and traps, and I definitely found it better to blend three out of the four styles rather than completely focusing on one. Most enemies have a layer of armor which can protect their health bar, but you magic can bypass this. Using your magic too frequently can quickly deplete it, but that's when quickly switching to melee can keep you on the attack and your firearm can buy you some precious seconds to pop a health or magic potion. This obviously isn't the only way to play, of course, but I definitely recommend spreading the skill points out a little bit. There's an anti-cheesing radius, which if you leave this radius, it'll reset the enemy's health bar. Now, this is frustrating when the fight naturally makes its way outside of this radius without you even trying to cheese the enemy. Thankfully, you can get lucky and cheese an enemy when they completely freeze so we can pop them safely from a distance. So that's good. To be fair, this only happened to me twice. The camera can often be the worst enemy in the game as well at times, especially when fighting indoors or in tight areas. I found that hard difficulty was the sweet spot for me personally, because on normal it's a breeze once you've beefed up during the late game, but this can be changed anytime throughout. On hard, I had to concentrate throughout, maintaining a satisfying challenge without without it being too brutal, but each to their own. There's a tactical pause option too, which I rarely used in all honesty, but there was the odd moment where it saved my life, and I think some players will use this a lot more than others. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more enemy variety when out in the wilderness too, but the Devesp DLC thankfully adds a set of new enemies to deal with, which I'll get onto later. There is the option to play certain moments stealthily, though it's very rudimentary and never an essential part of the game, but it's sometimes strongly advised. It's simplistically crouching and hiding behind things and there's times where it's hard to remain immersed in these espionage moments when you're carefully plotting each step you take to avoid the gaze of an onlooking patrol only to turn around and remember you're escorting a whole bloody platoon of people because we don't look dodgy at all. It would have been nice to include a non-lethal approach when we could take down an enemy without it counting as a kill and harmfully impacting your relationship with that tribe. Avoidance is the only option when it comes to stealth. We're accompanied by a diverse 
group of characters to play alongside, and we can only take two of them out at any one time. During combat, they're useful as distractions and slowly chipping away at the enemy's health bar, but the best part is the dialogue they have during combat. You encounter lots of fights as we go out and explore, and there's nothing more enjoyable than hearing a bit of poison on my blade, then let's go! Over and over and over again. Without fail, the character Vasco will scream a bit of poison on my blade, then let's go! It's just an absolute treat to hear this sentence a good three, maybe four hundred times during my playthrough. Each character has their own combat catchphrase, but Vasco's a bit of poison on my blade, then let's go! was by far my favourite. The characters also play a role outside of combat as well, with each having their own background story and associated quests to complete, as well as constantly chipping in with their own opinions on the political situation that has arisen within the world. There are areas in the game that require a disguise for us to safely access, and even then, your team won't hesitate to give you their thoughts on how to approach certain fights. We'll pretend that we are warehouse workers, then we will silly string the bejesus out of the place. And if we have to defend ourselves, I will stab the security guard in the eye with the jumbo chalk. No, no, you won't do that. Nope. Then I'll grind up the jumbo chalk and blow it in his eyes. Taking certain characters into certain areas can piss some people off because they're either racist or politically obliged to hate that person, and certain events can be triggered depending on who you're with. It's a game of choices, and how you treat your comrades in these situations will impact on the relationship that you have with them, which can have short and long-term effects on how the game plays out. If you're a save scummer who wants to know all the available choices ahead by reloading every five minutes, or whether you're the type of playthrough with a whatever-will-be-will-be -will -be kind of attitude, you won't be disappointed when it comes to the choices. You can even make some romantic choices as well, if that's your thing. The exploration is really, really rewarding. It's detailed without being overwhelming. It isn't littered with a billion icons to investigate, but there's well-balanced amount of nooks and crannies to wander through, a healthy amount of loot chests, plantations, mining ores, and skill point altars to find. The world is semi-open world that's split into regions that are separated by a small loading screen and an area to buy, sell, craft, and upgrade your gear. One issue I did have with the exploration was the developers disguising of areas that weren't ready to be explored yet. There weren't too many of these, but there were a few areas I explored that were just empty assets because I hadn't reached that part of the story yet or unlocked that certain quest yet. These either need to be locked or disguised as blocked by a fallen tree or some rubble or something like that. They should at least be populated with NPCs. Moments like this can seriously break the immersion, but it wasn't really that common. One issue I've got with a lot of RPGs is the lack of a theft system. System. I hate wandering into someone's home or a merchant shop and just opening up every single chest in plain sight and helping myself to whatever I bloody want. Hey, 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 hey! You dropped something. Now, the best part of Greedfall is the in-depth RPG systems, the skill trees, the upgrades, the crafting, and the skill checks. The skill system is a nicely structured one, split into three main categories of skills, attributes, and talents, and within these categories are tons of subcategories. The skills mainly focus on combat, such as one-on-one, -on -one, two-handed weapons, magic, firearms, and traps. The attributes focus on your own abilities that help you use higher quality weapons and armor, and the talent section unlocks abilities that affect your interactions with the world, like lockpicking, charisma, and the ability to climb taller cliff faces and make longer jumps that'll give you access to new hidden areas on the map. A brilliantly layered system, and each layer complements the next with more and more RPG goodness. Crafting isn't quite as in-depth as the skill system, but there's still an enjoyable amount of tweaking that adds beneficial stat boosts, and no matter what I wore, I never looked like a complete lemon. Most of the armor looks pretty good, even when mismatched with the variety of faction armors that's available available to you. The armor system is simple to grasp and it's good fun to improve your character with custom slots for fine tuning your character's stats as well as making all the local NPCs green with envy with some of the most fabulous hats you will ever see in a game. Is your hat out of style? Oh. Yo, what's up man? How you been? Oh, you know cuz. Keeping it straight.
some of the quests do feel a little uneven on the conversation versus combat side of things, with some involving lots of backtracking to deliver messages without much action happening in between, then some feel like pretty meaningless clear out this area of beasts or guard type quests. As mentioned earlier, there's multiple endings and with that comes multiple ways to complete certain quests, whether that's brute force or head on combat, stealth or certain actions that are specific to that quest. There's usually a good sense of choice with each quest and that doesn't just apply to the main quests either. Side quests often have choices and there's even my favourite types of distractions to be found throughout the world. There's these little notes that give clues to nearby hidden treasure which always brings the notion that exploration will be rewarded. The most common alternative way to complete quests is through charisma skill checks and hearing our character jumping on his high horse to throw accusations at the deceitful character that stands before him with shameless pomposity was always a treat to listen to. I submit you took that baseball, stashed it in your unusually large vagina and walked right on out of here. I really enjoyed the story throughout Greed 4, but I can sympathise with someone who doesn't. It's heavy on the politics, which isn't usually my thing either, but obviously this is a fantasy world of politics, with fictional governments, lies, deceit, and a world of new cultures to learn about. We play as Desade, a neutral and a noble of the merchant congregation, and a plague known as the Malachor has invaded the world, but the discovery of the island called Tefredi has opened up a new and wondrous opportunity for humanity, and Desade's main goal on the island is to uncover a possible cure to the Malachor disease. I really enjoyed it. There's a little lull in the middle act, but without spoiling too much, there's plenty of big twists and turns that occur in the final act of the main plot, and some well-written subplots to explore for each character as well. Visually, it's cliche, but it's a mixed bag, with some really nice lighting and shading with some very atmospheric foggy areas as well. The built-up areas are rich with detail in the streets, but the interiors of the buildings suffer with a not-too-subtle copy-and-paste technique. Getting up close and personal with some of the textures was a bit of an eyesore at times, and playing Greedfall for a third time on my PC with a 3070 at 1440p, there were some textures that you'd expect a little bit more fidelity from, and performance-wise, it's mostly stable with the odd dip during some of the heavy effects during the combat. The Greedfall Gold Edition is a standalone purchase for players who've never bought the base game and is available on PS5, Series X and PC. This includes the base game and the new DLC, The Divesp Conspiracy. Buying this version will land you three lithographs, a poster and a sticker sheet with actual stickers that you can stick wherever you bloody want. Incredible stuff. Most importantly, the game is geared up for some current gen fun with a native 4K mode and 60fps on performance mode as well. Also worth noting is that your old saves can be imported over and the upgrade to play at 4k and 60 fps is free but as expected the dlc is not a little bit about the dlc there's new enemies a new whole area to explore on the island of tier 3 d and a new storyline to uncover a whole range of new characters and in true rpg fashion there's multiple endings there's even a new difficulty mode called piss easy mode well it's not it's actually called discovery mode but you get the idea it's accessible from mid game and late game where a letter will be waiting for you at all of your campsites and residents. Overall, Greedfall is a fairly rigid experience, but still one that's well worth experiencing, especially fans of Dragon Age or The Witcher. I think if you're here for the RPG side of things, then you'll love it. If you're only here for the combat, then you might not love this so much. Ultimately, yes, you absolutely should buy Greedfall. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.